Super exciting. I mean, it's the most exciting time in baseball. I think uh, our most exciting team in baseball by far right now. So, I mean, uh, this is definitely kind of the place to be right now. <laughs> no doubt about it. Hey, you're going from a playoff team to a playoff team. But as you probably know, for the Padres, this is an organization and a fan base that has been hungry for postseason baseball for a long time. How meaningful is it to you to know that you're one of the key pieces in trying to, to bring that to fruition now? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked that they wanted me here. I mean, this is uh, definitely, a, I think, a destination a lot of guys would like to be. And, uh, you know, I think it's all about showing up to a ballpark we're going to be able to contend. And this is definitely one of those. And I know it's been since 2006. So uh, definitely something special brewing here. And I think it's going to be something special for the coming years, not just this year. Is this kind of a relief for you? It seemed like it might have been time for a change of scenery for you. And the trade rumors had been out there hanging over. And now it's done. A little bit of relief in that respect? Yeah, I think I was uh, riding the same roller coaster as everyone else for the last uh, 24 hours. It's been, you know, like for sure somebody, then for sure not the Padres, and then back to, you know, getting the call at 10 a.m. today and finding out that it is, in fact, the Padres. And, uh, I mean, I really could be more excited. This is exactly where I wanted to be, to be honest. Mike, it looked like you pitched about five days ago. I assume that you're, you're ready to rock and fire. Is there any protocols or anything that you need to go through first, or is it uh, hit the ground running and, and start pitching? Uh, definitely hit the ground running. I think just uh, getting over there is going to be the big feat right now. Uh, but I'm going to be – should be in San Diego within the next, you know, 48 hours for sure. And then uh, hopefully get on the bus with them to Anaheim. I should be pitching one of those games coming up shortly. Thanks, Mike. Good to have you on board. Yeah, thanks. Welcome to San Diego or Denver or wherever you're at right now. But um, <laughs> what – what did what was the percept? We know what the perception in San Diego is: the Padres, the build, and Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado, and on and on and on. What was the perception of the Padres from a distance? What were you hearing? What what's kind of the thought about that franchise from a distance? Uh, I mean, from a distance, this is a. Uh, I mean, you know, they're one of the best the best organizations around right now, and you see that. And uh, after watching what they've been doing the past forty eight hours. Uh, they're, they're trying to win, and that's, I think, in anybody's eyes, that's a very promising thing, not just for, you know, the Padres, but for the game of baseball itself. This is something I think the game needs. There's more teams out there pushing to win, and whether it means selling people you have emotional attachments to or not, you know, it's just trying to get that best squad out there to win ball games, no matter what it takes, and they're definitely showing that. And one quick follow-up. One, one of the situations, any, anytime somebody trades for a player in a bigger deal like yours, they do the research on all levels, and one of the questions I know the Padres had to ask is, what did the coronavirus COVID situation you had in Cleveland, what did it mean? What did it not mean? What is the message you wanted to give the Padres related to that situation? Yeah, I think, I think we all have, uh, you know, some, some hiccups and I don't think that that one, one mistake in my life is going to define me or my career. It doesn't define what I've done for the past five years, what kind of teammate I've been and what kind of person I, I am. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to let that moment define me as a person going forward. And I knew the changes that had to be put in place and, you know, maybe some self-reflecting that needed to be done was done. And uh, I just, I, I never want to put any other organization, let alone, you know, the Indians in some predicament like that. Again, I never, never was a distraction before. and I don't plan on ever being a distraction from anybody. Thank you. And good luck. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to AJ Casabo. Hi, Mike. I know it's probably been a lot to process in terms of all the different moves the Padres have made aside from just your own but when you look at this roster at least what you can make of it right now with all these trades going on like do you see a World Series contender caliber roster I mean I think before the trades there's a World Series caliber roster and then I mean coming now I think it's uh just getting a little bit even better so I think uh just getting there and getting all me and the rest of the guys kind of more in tune with the squad I think this is a team to make a serious serious run I don't I don't think there's be many teams that can really get in the way of what what we got right now. Next we'll go to Zach Meisel. Hey, Clev. Was, uh, I mean, you watched uh, Kluber get traded, Bauer get traded. Is that plant in your mind, just given where you were in terms of service time and your career, that, you know, at some point, like, you could be the next guy to go the way they develop pitching? I mean, yeah, definitely looking at just the depth and the way the pitching develops over here, it's uh, – you know, almost like an endless supply, it seems like, over the past couple of years. But, uh, yeah, I just – I mean, especially the way Indians, you know, kind of do things, which is, you know, they're, they're there to win every year. So, I mean, anybody has a price. Everybody has a price tag. I think everybody in the organization knows that. There's no one that's, you know, really untouchable over there. So, you kind of have that in the back of your mind. There wasn't really like a, a timer on it, but I knew that it, it could be very plausible this season or this offseason. And then is – I mean, you came up with this organization after your Tommy John surgery and the trade and – you know, is there a little bit of disappointment just to 
to not get to see it through to the end? I know you were talking the other day about wanting to win a World Series in Cleveland and, and kind of finish the deal. Uh, I mean, that's, that's hard. To, I mean, it's, as a person, that's, I mean, an easy thing to say. But, I mean, when you're really looking at things, it's like it, it's a business at the end of the day. You know, the business, if, that's, if they think that they're going to put together a better team uh, with the players they're getting and without you, then you just have to take that and roll with it. And uh, if anything, use that as motivation. But, uh, no, I don't think there's any hard feelings at all. I mean, this is just, a, I mean, it's, again, it's strictly a business. And, you know, I, I know that, like I said, everybody has a price tag, and I think they've been kind of shopping everybody for the, you know, past year and a half now. Thanks, Cliff. No problem. Next, we'll go to Kevin AC. Hey, Mike, you've talked about your excitement. It seems that you are very stoked to, to be a part of the Padres, but you were on a contender. Um, and, you know, there was some stuff that had gone on there that was maybe negative and stuff. I, I just wonder at this point in your career where you're at, wh what does it mean to you to be with a team that, that wanted you and that is so good? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, showing it to the ballpark every day, knowing that you have a chance to win a ball game, let alone, you know, go to the World Series is something that is, can't be really described. I mean, I've been lucky enough to be a part of it for the years with the Indians, and that kind of opened my eyes, especially talking and getting no guys around the league. And other guys, veteran guys, when I was younger, telling me, make sure you take advantage of this feeling when you're showing up, knowing you have a chance to win every day, because that doesn't happen everywhere. So that's something that I've always kind of held close to my heart, and uh, especially coming to this organization and knowing that this organization has a chance to win, not just this year, but the next five, six, seven years, is, I mean, you, you got to be excited for it. Next we'll go to Jorge Camacho. Hi, Mike. Do you have any opinion about the Padres rotation and what is your expectation uh, helping in this, in this situation with the starting pitchers in San Diego Padres? Uh, I, I mean, I, they have a stellar rotation right now. I think it's a little bit young. I mean, but then you have, uh, you know, Garrett Richards. I actually was in the minor leagues watching him, you know, deal for the Angels. Like, you know, idolizing his game when I was in the minor leagues when I got drafted with the Angels. So it's pretty cool to kind of get, get back and see him and, uh, you know, get with these guys. There's a ton of young talent and a ton of young arms. And I think, uh, you know, just a little – any extra pieces when you already have something good going is only going to make it better. Next to Mark Schwab. Like, obviously, after everything went down in Chicago, things were a little awkward. You know, some of the guys in the clubhouse were upset and everything. How do you leave here? Is there bad blood, any kind of burnt bridge? How, how do you exit Cleveland? No, I mean, uh, uh, as, as ugly as things got for a minute, uh, like I said, that was such a good group of guys. We, we pulled it together. I mean, my relationships, I mean, was already starting to be rebuilt, I guess. I don't think it was ever fully lost, man. I think it was more just a disappointed. It's like a... You know, like a friend let you down. It's not like a friend, like, you know, completely screwed you over. They were never kicking you to the curb. I mean, the texts I received from the guys on the team, even some of the ones that were really mad, you know, I mean, just show it. Uh, I don't think I ruined my legacy with them or here, and I have no bad blood against them. I understand why they're disappointed. I understand, you know, the, the distraction that it caused, let alone what could have came out of that. So, uh, no, no, no bad blood. Jason Lloyd? Mike, kind of along those lines. Your name really never came up very much. I mean, it did a little bit over the winter, but then this year there was really none of this talk until the incident in Chicago. How much do you think that impacted this? Are you surprised that we're in this position? And do you think it was any underlying reasons beyond Chicago? Or how much of an impact was that in this? Yeah, I'm just looking from a business standpoint. I really don't think that – I think this was, might have been inevitable at this point if they're looking for a bat. And, uh, you know, I got the two years of control – uh, you got a lot more years of control. All the guys, you know, younger than me in the rotation. You got Cookie already locked up. And this is the position that we've had a plethora of talent in for years. So I think this was kind of inevitable either way, whether or not Chicago happened. We have time for just a couple more questions. We'll go to Tony Alvarez. Thanks, Rick. Hey, Mike. Uh, welcome again to San Diego. Uh, in this team, you, you can see a lot of the guys that – Really, really show their emotions, whether it's pitching or batting or playing defense. And you, you look like a guy like, like a guy that does that as well. How do you, you see this team going forward? Obviously, building for the future because you mentioned that obviously you want to win now, but you're pretty excited for the commitment this team has towards the future. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean that's that's definitely what I'm excited for. It's not, it's not here just to get a quick, quick fix, get that quick win. I mean, uh, I, I've liked how much they're pushing for the future. Even when talking with. 
you know, AJ talking with Jace, it's not, it's not about just now. We, it's now, now it's like we want to win. We should win now. This is, we're planning to win for year after year after year and making this a franchise that's a playoff contender for years to come. Thanks, Mike. Next, we'll go to Jake. Hey, Mike, when you look at this defense you're going to be able to play behind, how excited is it that you – I mean, you play played behind some good defenses, but you got Tatis and you got Cronenworth and you got Machado. How exciting is that as the pitcher? I mean, it always makes you comfortable, especially with the, the catchers uh, they're bringing in. I've heard nothing but great things about their game calling and their defense too. So having those kind of set in place just make it even easier, let alone the offense is just blasting six runs a game on top of it. So, I mean, this is, almost seems like a perfect storm for a, a pitcher. And then for those of us that don't know you in San Diego, maybe the most important question, do you indeed have the best look in all of baseball with the hair and the mustache? <laughs> I don't go for that, man. I don't know. I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. We can put out a poll. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Welcome to San Diego. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Next we'll go to PJ. Hey, Mike, uh, I know you, got, you had a lot of great moments with uh, the city of Cleveland um, and the fans uh, over the years. Just wondering what message you have uh, for the Indians fans as you depart Cleveland and now begin your next part of your career in San Diego. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's obvious about my relationships I had with the staff and the players and the, you know, the journey it took me to get there. But I've built so many friendships and relationships outside that field that I never, ever kind of really – usually you live in this baseball bubble especially coming up your whole life because you're going from city to city, little city to little city in the minor leagues. The relationships I've built outside of that organization, have, so I'm, I'm, they're, they're going to be there forever. Like, like I said, this isn't, this isn't goodbye. This is a see you later to most of those people. And uh, they've had my back through thick and thin, so something I'm not going to ever forget. Hey, Mike. Um, wondering what it's like to be the guy who has been traded for knowing that, hey, if we get into the postseason, this is our game one guy right here. In all likelihood, that is you. That is one of the reasons they got you. Oh, I mean, I think you know, you know this well enough for me. I, 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 live, I live for those moments. I live for that. I live for that game exactly. That's why I play this game. I mean, the other things are nice. There's other commodities that come along. But uh, after getting to experience World Series, my first year in the big leagues, getting experience of postseason, finally getting a taste of my first postseason start against Houston, uh, this is this is the dream. This is a, uh, every player that's ever been there will tell you if there's one thing that they'll never forget is the feeling of uh, uh, in the postseason, the feeling of the, the stadium, the crowd, the volume. I know they might not be there this this go around with the crowd and stuff, but I mean, the the meaningfulness of every pitch and every out is just something that's you can't. It's like skydiving, and that's something uh, it's an adrenaline rush that you'll chase for the rest of your career if you taste it. So you're also a skydiver. No, 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 I'm definitely not. I'm afraid of heights, actually, but I'm assuming it's like that feeling of skydiving. I don't know if the owners want to hear that. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no problem.